Guys, so today we're going to be looking at the distance formula and the midpoint formula. So in order to find the distance between two points, so we're given two points on the coordinate plane, x1, y1, and x2, y2, we're going to take x2 minus x1, we're going to square that, add it to y2 minus y1 whole squared, and we're going to take the square root of the entire thing. So d is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So we're going to look at an example of this now. So this point here you can see is negative 5 comma 3. So we're going to go ahead and write that down. And then this point here is negative 2, negative 3. Okay? So we need to label these points. So we have one that's x1, y1, and it doesn't matter which one you label which. The other one's x2, y2. Okay? And we're going to use this distance formula. So the distance is equal to, we're going to put x2 minus x1 in this parentheses. So x2 is negative 2 minus x1. We've got written under negative 5. Okay? Squared plus, and we're literally just writing this down, except instead of x2, we're going to write the number that's above x2. Instead of x1, we're going to write the number that's above x1. Instead of x or y2, we're going to write the number that's above y2. And then instead of y1, we're going to write the number that's above y1. So y2 is negative 3 minus y1 is a positive 3 square, and we're just going to put a square root over the entire thing. So if we simplify this, negative 2, if you have 2 minus Science it changes into a plus. Negative 2 plus 5 is going to give us 3. We're squaring that still. Plus negative 3 minus 3. It's going to be negative 6, and we're squaring that. And the square root is still there. So if we take 3 squared, we get 9. Plus negative 6 times negative 6 is going to give us 36. And then if we go from there, we have square root of 45. Okay, but we don't want to leave it there. We're going to look at the different um, factors of 45 like we did before. We have 1 and 45, 3 and 15. None of those are perfect squares, so we can't stop yet. And then 5 and 9. 9 is a perfect square, so we can write that as the square root of 9 times the square root of 5. And then the square root of 9 is 3. We'll just leave the square root of 5 there. So again, we copied this down. We replaced the x2 and x1 with the x values, and we replaced the y2 and y1 with the y values, and we just could we could type that in a calculator to get a decimal answer, but I want you to simplify it underneath the radical and then write it like that. So if we look at number two, I'm gonna go ahead and write the formula over here. So we have it the entire time. We don't have to go up and down. Okay. So give uh, tells us to find the length between A and B given these points. So x1, y1, x2, y2. So the distance. Well, x2 minus x1. So we have this 3 minus negative 4 squared plus, there's a parentheses, y2 is negative 1 minus y1 is 1 square and then there's a square root over the entire thing. If we simple this, simplify this, we have square root of 7 squared because this changes to a plus sign because there's two minus signs so it's 3 plus 4 squared plus negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2 squared. 7 squared is 49. Negative 2 times negative 2 is going to give us 4 which will give us the square root of 53. And 53 is a prime number. Since it's prime, there's no way we can split it up. So we can leave it as square root of 53. We'll do the same thing for number three. Label the point x1, y1. Label the other point x2, y2. Okay? We're going to use the distance formula. So it's parentheses, x2 minus x1 parentheses. So x2 is 11 minus x1. Is negative 7 squared plus parentheses y2 minus y1 parentheses y2 is 3 
minus y1 is negative 2, parentheses squared, and then we just copy down the square root over top of it. Okay, 11 plus 7 gives us 18 squared. 3 plus 2, because there's two minus signs, two negative makes a positive. 3 plus 2 gives us 5, and that's still squared. Okay. That gives us 324 plus 25 under that square root, which if we simplify gives us 349, and if you check, also is prime. So that's all we have to do. That's our answer. Square root of 349. Leave it as a radical. Don't give me a decimal answer. So again, you just label the points x1, y1, label the other one x2, y2, and we replace these with the values that we've labeled. So now we're gonna be looking at the midpoint formula. So it also gives us two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2. And this is going to give us a point. So the midpoint of the line is going to be x1 plus y1 over two, or x1 plus x2 over two, sorry. And then the second part of that is going to be x1 plus y2. Sorry, see if I can talk x1, y1 plus y2 over 2. So you're adding the x values divided by 2 for the new x value, and then you're adding the y values and dividing by 2 for the y value. And this is a point. So it's a point on the coordinate plane, so you have x comma y. So if we're looking for the midpoint of this, and it gives us x1, y1, x2, y2. The midpoint of this line, gh, is going to be Okay, so we do x1 plus y, er, x1 plus x2, x1 is 7, plus x2 is 9, divide by 2, comma, y1 plus y2, we can replace y1 with negative 5, plus y2 is negative 1, and we're going to divide that by 2. Now we're just going to simplify. 7 plus 9 gives us 16 over 2 keep the parentheses and stuff. That's a horrible comma. Put a comma in between them. Negative 5 plus negative 1 gives us negative 6 over 2. And then if we simplify that, we get 8, negative 3. And that's our answer. So the point would be at 8, negative 3. So if we actually graph this, it'd be 7, negative 5. So it'd be up here and down here a little bit. And then 9, negative 1 would be about right there. And then the midpoint would be somewhere in the middle. That's how it would look. So if we look at number five, we're looking for the midpoint of this line, AB, given x1, y1, x2, y2. So for the x-coordinate, we're going to add the x's together. So we're going to go negative 7 plus 3 divided by 2. And then for the y1, we're going to add the y's together and divide by 2. So 4 plus negative 4 divide by 2. Okay, negative 7 plus 3 is going to give us negative 4 over 2, and then negative 4 plus 4 plus negative 4 gives us 0 over 2. If we simplify this, negative 4 divided by 2 is going to be negative 2, and then 0 divided by anything is going to give us 0. So that's going to be the midpoint. So if we graph that one, we would have negative 7 comma 4 would be like up here somewhere, and then 3, negative 4 would be down here somewhere. And then negative 2, 0 would be right there. So it would be right in the center. Cut these perfectly in half. So if we go to the next page, we're looking for if we need to find a missing endpoint. So the main thing to focus on is that if we're looking for this, the x value of the midpoint is going to be x1 plus x2 divided by 2. And then the y value of the midpoint is going to be y1 plus y2 divided by 2. We're going to have to use those, so make sure you write those down. So if the coordinates, find the coordinates of A, if M, this point M is the midpoint, so this is going to be the X of the midpoint and the Y of the midpoint, okay? And then this is just going to be X1, Y1, because it's just going to be one of the points on the end. So we know that the X of the midpoint which we've got written here, negative 1, is going to be equal to x1, which we have here is 3, plus 
plus x2 is what we're looking for, divided by 2. Okay, we can multiply by 2 to try and solve for that. I didn't mean to cancel that one out because that one does not cancel out. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, so 2 times negative 1 gives you negative 2 equals this 3 plus x2. Okay, and then we need to subtract that 3, giving us that x2 is going to be negative 5. Okay, so the x value for this one that we're looking for is negative 5, but we still need the y value. So this y of the midpoint we have here is 2, is going to be equal to y1 plus y2. y1 is negative 5, plus we don't know what y2 is, so we're going to leave it there, divided by 2. Again, we're going to multiply by 2 to get rid of this 2. Leaves us 4 on this side, equals negative 5 plus y2, so whatever we had on top of the fraction. And then we're going to add 5, giving us 9 equals y2. So now that we have the x and the y, we just put them in a coordinate. So the x is negative 5, comma y is 9. That's going to be the outside point. So if we were to graph that, we would have negative 5, 9 would be up here somewhere, and then 3, negative 5 would be down here, and then the midpoint would be negative 1, comma 2, so about right there. Okay? And you don't have to graph them. It just helps to see them sometimes. So again, using these over here, it tells us the midpoint is this one. So this is the x of the midpoint. This is the y of the midpoint. And then this is just x1, y1 for the first point. And we're going to find the second point. So the x of the midpoint here is negative 5. It's going to be equal to x1 plus x2. x1 is negative 8 plus x2 is what we're looking for. Divided by 2. We'll multiply by 2. We had to do it on both sides. Gives us negative 10 equals negative 8 plus x2. And then we're going to add 8, giving us that x2 is negative 2. Okay? So now that we have the value of x2, we need the value of y2. So y of the midpoint, which we've got here, is 10 is equal to y1 is 6 plus y2 is what we're looking for. This divided by 2. We again multiply by 2. Gives us 20 on the side equals 6 plus y2. If we do subtract 6, we get 14 equals y2. And now we just put that together as a point. So x is negative 2. Okay. And then y is 14. I want you guys to try number 8 on your own. Let me know if you have any issues with it. Again, we know that this is the x midpoint and this is the y midpoint. This is x1 and this is y1. Use these to solve for x2 and y2 and put them in a coordinate point like that. So now we're going to look at some problems that actually have some algebra in them. And so it's the same concept, just having to solve. So if we look at number 9, it says if p is the midpoint of xy. So I'm going to draw a picture. Okay. So we have line segment xy. And P is the midpoint. Since it's midpoint, since we have the word midpoint, we know that these two are the same. Okay? They're equal to each other. It tells us that from X to P is 8X minus 2. And then from P to Y here is 12X minus 30. And it's telling us to find the value of X. So since we know the mid the P is the midpoint and that these two are the same. Since they're the same, they are equal to each other. So you just put an equal sign in between them. Okay? I'll subtract the 8x to the other side. Okay? Because this negative 2 equals 4x minus 30. If we add 30 to the other side, we get 28 equals 4x. If we divide both of these by 4, that's going to give us that x is 7. And that's all we're looking for on this one. Okay? So if it's the midpoint, they're equal to each other. So if we look at number 10, if g is the midpoint of fh, so we'll draw a picture. So we have fh and g is the midpoint. So these two are exactly the same to one another. From f to g is 14x plus 25. 
And then from g to h is 73 minus 2x. We're finding fh, okay? So we know that these two are the same from f to g is the same from g to h. So we can put an equal sign in between them. 73 minus 2x, okay? I'm going to subtract the 25 to the other side, okay? And that's going to give us that 14x is equal to 48 minus 2x, okay? And we'll add the 2x to the other side, giving us 16x is equal to 48, and then we'll divide by 16, okay? Giving us x is 3, okay? But this tells us to find FH, so that's the entire thing. So from F to H is going to be, you could either, you could do this multiple ways. So you could say from F to H is this plus this. You could also say F to H is two of this, so two times whatever you get for this, or two times this. I'm just gonna go ahead and do it, say that from F to H is this plus this. So we have that from f to h is f to g, which is 14x plus 25, plus from g to h, 73 minus 2x. Okay, and then we can replace the x with 3. And if we type that in a calculator, then we are going to get 134. And it really is that simple. So if you know that they are the same, then you can set an equal sign in between them. So now, if we look at number 11, it says, using the diagram to the left, if line in bisects QR, so that means the line in here hits this at the midpoint. So P is the midpoint, so these are the same. They're congruent to one another. Okay, and we're looking for QP. So we have that these two are the same. If they're the same and they are congruent to one another, we can put an equal sign between them. Okay, and solve for x like that. So we'll subtract 3x to get the x's on their own side. Okay. Then we'll get the 19 on the other side because we want them at ones with x on one side and the ones without it on the other side. Okay, so you get 24 equals 2x. And then if we divide by 2, it gives us x is equal to 12, okay? But it tells us to find qp. So from q to p here, we can see is 3x plus 5. So if we replace the x with 12, we are going to get 41 as our answer. So with these ones, make sure you read, make sure you pay attention to the word midpoint or bisect. That means that two things are going to be the same. You can set an equal sign in between them, solve for x, and plug it in. Let me know if you guys have any problems with any of this or if you have any questions. You have some practice problems to work on tomorrow, so let me know if you have any issues with that as well. And I will see you guys later. Have a great day, 